I want to kind of circle back to to something you said just previously. You were talking about like, hey, you know, some of these cases take three years, some take two years, and and the cash flow ebbs and flows. Correct. No pun intended. What were some of the things that you put into place to help mitigate and solve that? Do you put money in a money market account? Do you you have a line of credit? Do you like what are some of the strategies that you use to kind of help mitigate those issues? So I like to have a diversified approach. So, you know, the war chest is there, but it's not all in one big pile. You know what I mean? So I've got a line of credit that I don't draw from, but that first year, you better believe that I was drawn from it all the time. Um, and, and I was, I remember after that was 2019 and 2020, I settled the case and made about, I think it was a three, three or $400,000 fee in, in January of 2020. And I was like, thank God I'm paying off the line of credit, you know? Um, so I haven't touched that since then, but that's, you got to have something like that. So I've got that. We, we do, um, the, the great thing about a lot of these systems and, um, you know, third party companies and people that you can use, you can pay them via credit card. And so we do a lot. Um, it, it was, it was crazy. We used to, I used to sit down and sign like 30 checks, man every day. That was like my job. It's like time to sign checks, you know? So I'd sit down and sign all these checks and that's gone down because now we're paying a lot of these vendors, you know, via credit card. And then, you know, that obviously is something that, you know, we try to get points and benefits and stuff from that, you know, and it's automated and it makes it faster. Um, uh, and then, you know, I like to have in the operating account, you know, several months worth of expenses. Um, and, then and then I've also got an account where I save money for cases that require a lot of litigation expenses, you know, and so wow. because some of these cases you never know. I mean, I, I've got a case right now where we may end up filing against a major auto manufacturer uh, where a baby was killed, you know, and um, uh, got another case against a major pharmaceutical company here in town. And, and I mean, those, those companies, they've got more money than anyone, you know, and, and they know that if you don't have the resources to back it up and to really get into that long fight with them, um, that you're going to fold early and you're going to settle your case for nothing, you know, and try to convince the client, you know? And so I, I, like I said, I, I've got a diversified approach and I try to, um, make sure that we, are in a position to be able to fight and support our clients and to support my staff. You know, going back to 2019, I mean, the one thing I know that I did, I made payroll and I gave bonuses for sure. And that, Fantastic. And, and, and that was like my, I was like, I got to keep all these people here and uh, they rely on me. You know, that's the shift. That's the one shift that was uh, for me at first difficult, you know, understanding that, you know, now I've got, I've got my family at home my, that, that rely on me, but now I've got this work family that, you know, looks to me and relies on me to make sure that they are getting the tools that they need and the resources they need to support their families. Um, yeah. Yeah. And as, as entrepreneurs and owners that you, you spend a tremendous amount of time with these individuals and, and when your back's against the wall, their the loyalty increases when you're taking care of them. Uh, jumping over to, and this, this is fantastic, Alex. Um, I want to talk about, you know, in the beginning you were, when you took over, you're focused on leads, but you already had this book of business and you're saying, Hey, I should have focused on getting maximum value and taking care of those yeah. throughput, getting those on the, a couple things. First, this is the first time that I can recall. So when I was doing my research, just a little extra research today. I was checking out the website and I noticed she had peer referrals. I was like that or peer peer testimonials. And that's a bit different being a litigating firm that you are. I haven't seen that. And I think it's super smart. It's like, Hey, not only is the consumer saying how good this firm is here, are other attorneys mm -hmm. saying this firm is good. Have you, have you had your consumers talk about that? Have they mentioned these peer refer peer uh, testimonials? Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny. You said that I'm actually ramping up those efforts. I'm getting videos now from lawyers that have referred me cases 
uh, and that'll be the next step. Um, you know, on the, the website is actually undergoing, we're, we're changing our domain name to hearstlamontes.com. It was billhurst.com for a while, and that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. And then we're going to be doing a lot of upgrading on, on the video end. And, and I think that, you know, I'm, you, you work with a lot of lawyers, you know, lawyers, I'm a lawyer, I know lawyers. And, and really the best lawyer is the one that is recommended to you by another lawyer. And um, people, you know, just lay people uh, have that same general understanding. And I've had people say to me, you know, so-and-so told me to call you. Um, I've, I've inherited cases from, you know, those big, those big advertising firms. I mean, God bless them. They do what they, that's how they do their work, you know, and they dump a bunch of money into advertising. But I mean, we just had one the other day. The client fired the firm because the the firm wanted him to settle for like fifteen thousand dollars, and we got him sixty grand. So because we we fight, you know what I mean, and and we don't, you know, sometimes we don't settle these cases until four weeks before trial, because I know that that's how I'm going to get the maximum value from the client for the client, you know. Um, One thing that's resonated so clear to me recently is I heard this on like the productized pre-lit firm that, that doesn't try any cases versus the trial firm is the productized is solving for the average, not that individual, very customer, very widget, yeah. right? They're going to look, this is what that case is worth, Yeah. right? They're, they're comparing it to the average versus you, the trial, you're getting maximum compensation for the individual, the client. I think that distinction, I think it's lost. I don't think it's a lot of times you hear the pre-lit firm talking about client service and things, but it's, it's kind of a, a little misleading. Yeah. <laughs> and, and look, there are some great pre-lit firms. Absolutely. But I, I, I just wanted to make that distinction that, yeah, the productized typically solving for the average where you're solving for the individual. Yeah. I mean, you know, you see like, I, I, Morgan and Morgan just came into town and he's got the size matters thing going. And, and to me, I'm thinking, you know, clients matter. That's really what matters. The people that we, that we help, because the, the fact is, you know, I'll get a call from a Chicago lawyer who's trying to settle a, a, a small run of the mill case, you know, and that he's got an offer for about 15 grand, but he knows that it's probably worth closer to 25 or $30,000. And so calls me and we file it. And then we go get that for the client. And, you know, and that's a small case, but that's okay. Cause I don't hate on the size of the case, you know, any case, if it's a big deal to the client, then it's a big deal to us, you know, regardless of the amount of money, because I understand that helping that person, even with their case, that's worth three or $4,000. Um, I understand that that person will become my best, uh, advertiser, my best, you know, marketer. And they'll sing my praises because they probably had to go to three or four other pre-lit big business firms before they found us, you know, someone that was willing to go to bat for them and fight for them, um, regardless of the size of the case. I mean, I tell everyone, all my new clients, I don't care if your case is worth a thousand dollars or a million dollars, you will get the same service here from day one, the moment they call. And, and we get the, the phone call, we do a quick intake and they are immediately sent to a lawyer. Every new call talks to a lawyer, unless it's someone that's like, I got to, I need a divorce or something. Then we refer them out to our partners. Um, but you know, and, and usually that first lawyer that talks to them, that's not like an intake lawyer. Those are trial lawyers and they are there from the beginning to the end. It is, I, it's an old school approach. But I love it and I like it because it's a personal touch to the client. It's the same person. It's not, um, you know, I think you had Joey Coleman on. Uh, yeah. And yeah. He was, he yeah. Was, never lose yeah, a customer. He loves, I love that analogy about, you know, you're courting someone and then you're like, hey, here's Bob, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I love that it's too. It's awesome, right? Like, and it's so true. Um, I love analogies. I'm a lawyer, you know. But anyways, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't want people to feel like that, you know, and, um, you know, for, for them, the, the reality is, man, is we're, it's apples to oranges. I'm getting a money for an injury or a death, you know, 
It's a poor substitute, but it's the only substitute we have. And so most of my clients, it's not a, the amount of money. It's not about the amount. It's about being done with this and feeling validated and feeling listened to, okay, and supported. And for them, that experience, that's why they keep coming back to us or tell their friend, you know, because they know that our firm is going to be there from them from day one. I mean, even if we got to go fight bills and Medicaid liens and, and all this, everything, you know, we do it all. We guarantee every one of our clients gets the same guarantee. If we settle your case, because when you go to trial, all bets are off because you don't know what a jury is going to do, right? If we settle your case, the attorney fee will never exceed what you get in your pocket, period, the end. It's been that way from day one, and I'm never going to let that go. Um, <clears throat> and we don't have sliding scale attorney fees either. We charge a third. If we go to trial, we charge a third. If we appeal the case, we charge a third. We don't charge 35, 40% because the risk does go up, you know, um, and the reason that was something that we did that we've been doing for years. And I, I want to, I want to keep it going because frankly, a third is more than enough. It is, you know, I understand that there's a lot of effort and work that goes into this. I've spent countless weekends getting ready nights, getting ready for trial. I had a Supreme court argument, uh, years back. And, and I mean, I killed myself doing that. And so, um, you know, it, it is, it's a lot of work and, but at the end of the day, you, you, if you do it for the client, you're doing it for the right reason. That's one of the first things Bill told me when I first started working there with him in 2011, he said, cause I was so worried about making money, you know, um, because I just had my own practice and, and it was kind of, you know, piecemealing family law, criminal law. And so he told me, it was like, Alex, don't worry about making money help these people and the money will come. And, and he said that and I was like, shit, <laughs> that's like a moment, you know, like what a revelation. And, and so, um, and it is, he's true as true. He was absolutely right. Absolutely right. That's the, the, the go giver type, you know, give without yeah. expecting anything in return, but those who give often receive the lion's share of the return. And then I asking for those reviews and those referrals and those testimonials, that's a piece of cake. It's not this like thorn in your side. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I got to ask these people. No, they're happy. It's an easy conversation. I think uh, uh, just, I, I, just to the reviews, those are those. They're so big. We've got a pretty good review profile. Um, uh, mm -hmm. We've got over 100 reviews. We had someone change one. They they there was an old client. They gave us a five star review. Then they went to go talk to their new doctor who gave them another opinion. And then they changed their review three years after we settled. Wow. Three years. And then that we had a 5.0 rating, took us down to 4.9. Um, we, we did, I even did like, I called her, talked to her, tried to, I even thought about doing the old John Morgan showing up with a fruit basket, you know, <laughs> in our house, <laughs> you know, but uh, uh. But, you know, and, and you talk about it on your show, you can't, not everyone's going to be happy. Sometimes people call and they're like, can you do this? And like, we can't really take this case, you know, and they, they may have never even been a client, but they give you that one star review, you know, and the one thing, yeah. I don't know if people are still doing this, but we used to get the people that would like canvas businesses to try to increase their Google rating or something. So they, they would dump like 20, 30 reviews on businesses in an area within a day 